in the book you have a picture. This, I just have a lot of ridiculous questions. You have a picture of two hospital delivery robots with a caption that reads, by the way, see your book, I appreciate that it, it keeps the humor in. You didn't run it by the PR department. <laughs> no, no one edited the book. We got rushed through. <laughs> uh, the, the caption reads, two hospital delivery robots whose sexy nurse names Roxy and Lola made me roll my eyes so hard they almost fell out. Um, what aspect of it made you roll your eyes? Is it the naming? <laughs> it was is the naming. The form factor is fine. It's like a little box on wheels. The fact that they named them, also great. That'll let people enjoy interacting with them. We know that even just giving a robot a name, people will, uh, it, it facilitates technology adoption. People will be like, oh, you know, Betsy made a mistake. Let's help her out instead of the stupid robot doesn't work. But why Loli and Lola and Roxy? Like Those are to you too sexy? I mean, there's research showing that a lot of robots are named according to gender biases about the function that they're fulfilling. So, you know, robots that are helpful in assistance and are like nurses are usually female gendered. Robots that are, you know, powerful, all wise computers like Watson usually have like a booming male uh, coded voice and, and name. So like, I, like that's one of those things, right? You're opening a can of worms for no reason. For no reason. Or you can avoid this whole can of worms. Yeah, just give it a different name. Like, why Roxy? It's because people aren't even thinking. So, to some extent, I don't, I don't like PR departments, but getting some feedback on your work from a diverse set of participants, yes. listening and taking in things that help you identify your own blind spots, and then you can always make your good leadership choices and good, like you can still ignore things that you don't believe are an issue, but having the openness to take in feedback and making sure that you're getting the right feedback from the right people, I think that's really important. So don't unnecessarily propagate the biases of society. Yeah, why? In the design. But uh, if you're not careful, the when, when you do the research of like, you might, if you ran a poll with a lot of people of, of all the possible names these robots have, they might come up with Roxy and Lola as as, as names they um, would enjoy most. Like that could come up as uh, as the highest. As in you do marketing research and then, well, that's what they did with Alexa. They did marketing research yeah. and nobody wanted the male voice. Everyone wanted it to be female. Well, what do you what do you think about that? Like what? I, I mean, if I if I were to say, I think the role of a great designer, again, to go back to Johnny Ive, is to throw out the marketing research. Yeah. Like, take it in, do it, learn from it. But like, if everyone wants Alexa to be, to be a female voice, the role of the designer is to think deeply about the future of social agents in the home and think. Like, what does that future look like? Yeah. And try to reverse engineer that future. So like, in some sense, there's this weird tension, like you want to listen to a lot of people, but at the same time you want to, you're creating a thing that defines the future of the world and the people that you're listening to are part of the past. So like that weird tension. Yeah, I think that's true. And I think some companies like Apple have historically done very well at, understanding a market and saying, you know what our role is? It's not to listen to what the current market says. It's to actually shape the market and shape consumer preferences. And com companies have the power to do that. They can be forward thinking and they can actually shift what the future of technology looks like. And I agree with you that I would like to see more of that, especially when it comes to <laughs> existing biases that we know, or, or you know, that that... I think there's the low hanging fruit of companies that don't even think about it at all and aren't talking to the right people and aren't yeah. getting the full information. And then there's companies that are just like doing the safe thing and and giving consumers what they want now. But to be really forward looking and be really successful, I think you have to make some judgment calls about what the future is gonna be. But do you think it's still useful to gender and to name the robots? Yes, I mean, gender is a minefield, but people, 
I, it's really hard to get people to not gender a robot in some way. So if you don't give it a name or you give it a like ambiguous voice, people will just choose something. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's better than just like, uh, you know, entrenching something that you've decided is best. But I do think it, it can be helpful on the like anthropomorphism engagement level to give it attributes that people identify with. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of roboticists I know, they they don't gender the robot. They don't, they even try to avoid naming the robot or naming it ain't something that is, uh, can be used as a name in conversation kind of thing. And I think that actually that's uh, irresponsible because people are going to anthropomorphize the thing anyway. So you're just uh, removing from yourself the responsibility of how they're, they're going to anthropomorphize it. That's a good point. And so like, you want to be able to, to, like they're going to do it. You have to start to think about how they're going to do it. Even if the robot is like a Boston Dynamics robot that's not supposed to have any kind of social component, they're obviously going to project a social component to it. Yeah. Like that arm, I worked a lot, a lot with uh, quadrupeds now with, with with robot dogs. You know that arm people think is a head immediately. Yeah, it's supposed to be an arm, but they start to think it's a head, and you have to like acknowledge that you can't. I mean, uh, they the, do now. They do now. Well, they've deployed the robots, and people are like, "Oh my god, the cops are using a robot dog," and so they have this PR nightmare, and so they're like, "Oh, yeah, okay, maybe we should hire some HRI people." Well, Boston Dynamics is an interesting company, or any of the others that are doing a similar thing, because their their main source of money is um, in the industrial applications, so like surveillance of factories and uh, doing dangerous jobs. So to them, it's almost good PR to for people to be scared of these things, because it's it's for some reason, as you talk about, people are naturally for some reason scared. We could talk about that of robots, and so it becomes more viral, like uh, playing with that little fear. And so it's almost like a good PR because ultimately they're not trying to put them in the home and have a good social connection. They're trying to put them in factories, and so they 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 have fun with it. If you watch Boston Dynamics videos, yeah, they're aware of it. Oh yeah, they're. I mean, I was the videos for sure it, that they put out. It's almost like an unspoken tongue-in-cheek thing. They, they're they aware of how people are going to feel when you have a robot that does like a flip. Now, most of the people are uh, just like excited about the control problem of it, like how to, how to make the whole thing happen. But they're aware when people see. Well, I think they became aware. I think that in the beginning, they were really, really focused on just the engineering. I mean, they're at the forefront of robotics, yeah. like locomotion and stuff. Um, and then when they started doing the videos, I think that was kind of a labor of love. I know that the former CEO, Mark, like mm -hmm. he oversaw a lot of the videos and made a lot of them himself. And like, mm -hmm. he's even really, really detail oriented. Like there can't be like some sort of incline that would give the robot an advantage. They're very, like he, he was very, um, had a lot of integrity about the authenticity of them. Uh, and, but then when they started to go viral, I think that's when they started to realize, oh, there's something interesting here that you know i don't i don't know how much they took it seriously in the beginning other than realizing that they could play within the videos yeah i know that they take it very seriously now what i like about boston dynamics and similar companies it's still mostly run by engineers but you know i've had my criticisms there's a bit more pr leaking in but those, <laughs> those videos are made by engineers because that's what they find fun. Mm -hmm. It's like testing the robustness of the system. I mean, they, uh, they're they having a lot of fun there with the robots. Totally. <laughs> have you been Have you been to visit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, so cool. it's one of the most incredible. Like I, 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 uh, I mean, because I, I have um, eight uh, robot dogs now. Uh, Wait, you have eight robot yeah. dogs? What? Uh, <laughs> so they're just walking around your place, like where yeah, I'm working them? on them. Uh, that's actually one of my goals is to have at any one time 
or is the robot moving? Oh, I'm far away. That's from an that. ambitious goal. Well, I have like more Roombas that I know what to do with no, the room <laughs> that I program. So the the programmable Roombas. Nice. And um, I have a bunch of little like I, I built the. Well, I'm not finished with it yet, but bought a robot from Rick and Morty. I still have a bunch of robots everywhere. But the thing is, what happens is you're working on one robot at a time, and uh, that becomes like a little project. It's actually very difficult to have just a passively functioning robot always moving. Yeah, and that's a, that's a that's a dream for me because I'd, I'd love to create that kind of a little world. So uh, the the impressive thing about Boston Dynamics to me was to see like hundreds of spots, and like there's a the most impressive thing that still sticks with me is um, there was a a spot robot walking down the hall seemingly with no supervision whatsoever and he was wearing he or she i don't know was wearing a cowboy hat <laughs> it just it was just walking down the hall and nobody paying attention and it's just like walking down this long hall and i'm like looking around does is anyone like what's happening here so um, presumably some kind of automation was doing the map i mean the, the whole environment is probably really well mapped but i <laughs> it was just it gave me a picture of a world where a robot is doing doing his thing, wearing a yeah. cowboy hat, just going down the hall, like getting some coffee or whatever. Like I don't know what it's doing, what's the mission, but uh, I don't know. For some reason, it really stuck with me. You don't often see robots that aren't part of a demo or that aren't, uh, you know, like a, with a semi autonomous or autonomous vehicle, uh, like directly doing a task. This was just chilling. Yeah, just walking around. I don't know. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, we're at MIT. Like when I first got to MIT, it was like, okay, where's all the where's all the robots? And they were all like broken or like yeah. not demoing. So, yeah. Uh, and 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 what really excites me is that we're about to have that. We're about to have so many moving rope about to. Well, it's coming. It's coming in our lifetime that we will just have robots moving around. We're already seeing the beginnings of it. There's delivery robots in some cities on the sidewalks. And I just love seeing like the TikToks of people reacting to that. Because yeah, you see a robot walking down the hall with a cowboy hat. You're like, what the fuck? What is this? <laughs> yeah. This is awesome and scary and kind of awesome. Yeah. And people either love or hate it. That's one of the things that I think companies are underestimating that people will either love a robot or hate a robot and nothing in between. Mm -hmm. So it's just, again, an exciting time to be alive. Yeah, I, I think kids almost universally, at least in my experience, love them. Lo love legged robots. Especially. If they're not loud, my, my son hates the Roomba because ours is loud. Oh, that, yeah. No, the legs, the legs make oh, a yeah. difference. Because I, I your son, um, do, do they understand Roomba to be a robot? Oh yeah, my kids, that's one of the first words they learned. They know how to say beep boop. And yes, they think the Roomba's a robot. Does Do they project intelligence out of the thing? Well, we don't really use it around them anymore for <laughs> the reason that my son is noise. scared of it. Hmm. Yeah, that's really they I think they would. Like even a Roomba, because it's moving around on its own, I think kids and animals, view it as a, an agent. 